don't quite know what life would be without depth of field. When I discovered what it was, I kind of abused it a lot. And I, I don't really feel comfortable without it, which is something I'm, I'm trying to work on. But sometimes this thing happens where, you know, you'll go out, you'll film, uh, you want really nice blur, motion blur or whatnot. Um, you go out and you do a render that takes 30 hours or something. You don't have the right amount of depth of field. Um, and that's really annoying. So today I'm going to show you this technique I do um, in After Effects. Uh, I was actually using it last night on a project and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a tutorial on it. Um, quick and easy. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to be using this render of a dice board I did uh, a couple days ago, which was a lot of fun. I really, really like the colours of um, like casinos and stuff. Uh, very vibrant. There's always a lot of colours going on. I don't actually know if that's to draw you in. I, I've no, I know nothing about poker and casinos and stuff. But you know, if we go and look at some uh, photos of like gambling and oh, shit, sorry. Um, you can you can see the vibrance. It's, it's a lot of colour going on. Uh, so I thought I would do one of those renders. I think I'm gonna do one of these things next because these look cool. Look at those reflections. It's awesome. Right, uh, the field. I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not. This is really easy. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with the mask. Um, you can go around your objects. Uh, if you're going for really kind of photorealistic, it's best to go probably straight through the middle. Um, you've kind of got to think in Z space here, something like that. Effect, blur, camera lens blur, it's just quite light blur, I already had depth of field on here, this is really good for noise reduction as well, um, so keep that in mind, 15 repeat edge pixels, and now you can see, voila, it's there, but it's looking awful sharp, and we don't want that, so let's set this to maybe 150, huge, huge fall off. And you can see now we have depth of field. It's that easy. But what I don't like is the back end of these objects being blurred out. Because the blur isn't nice enough for that. So I'm going to press G. And this is what I usually do. And just sort of bend around my focus object. And keep the background very much blurred. Can I get it on like a horizontal line, kind of uh, diagonal line? Sorry, something like that. That is the way I like it. You can see it's much cleaner now. The background's fading out. The object is in in focus. That's a really nice way of doing it. Now handling it in a scene with a lot more Z space. A lot more depth to it, for example. This mountain. Really like this render. Just posted it on Instagram uh, a couple of days ago. I've done it ages ago. <laughs> it just sort of sat on the computer. And you can see here we would do a horizontal line because focus points about here. We've got some blur going on here. So let's let's do that. Kind of want to follow the way this bit's higher up, so we can kind of follow that bit and then just go, just do like straight. Oh, oh, I forgot to duplicate it. Just duplicate it. Masks, no mask. There you go. Uh, put on our blur again and fifteen. Nah, 25. 25, there you go. Feather, maybe 200 this time. And now you've got the mountain blurred. It's honestly, I yeah, can't express it enough, it's so easy. I'm gonna bring this out a bit though. So if you were looking for a quick way to get some depth of field, save you going and filming whatever you filmed or rendering whatever you rendered 
doing whatever you did. You can animate this easy, you just animate the position. You can do it frame by frame, I usually do, but if you don't want to do that, do it every 5-10 frames, depending on your scene. Um, if there's not much movement, uh, you really can get away with that, but if there's a lot of movement, I would suggest just like full on like rotoscoping it and doing it like every frame. Um, so yeah, have fun with it. This was super, super quick. It's amazing how quick some of these things can come into fruition sometimes when you need them. And I have a lot of stuff like this I use in every project, just little things I've picked up. So I'll probably do more quick tutorials than that. Hope you learned something. Uh, more tutorials coming soon. This has been Sketchy, and I'll see you in the next one. Well, let's get out of here!